about the body being many parts and all of those parts being important but they all have to work together and even though I'm going to be sharing some specifics with you it's not as if one is more important or any less important than the other because they're all required in order for, in order for us to get the work done and I always have to pause when you ask when you ask me about vision of our church I always have to kind of take a little bit of a moment just to make sure that we're clear because we call ourselves a church but in reality we're just a congregation because there's only one church and so God has already given a vision for the church and even though we use the two terms interchangeably uh, he's already given the vision for the church we have a vision for the congregation. We're part of the body. We're just part of the peace part that makes it all work together. But we are just a congregation. We don't need to get it, get it twisted, get any big of ourselves, because we're just a part. But it's important that we do our part really, really well with a level of excellence. It's really important. If you go to, if you go to Matthew, if you go to Matthew, the 28th chapter, and I'm just going to share just a little bit of this with you, just 28th chapter and the 19th verse. I'll just skip down to there. But every church and every Christian and every person within the church, we've already been given one thing that we have to do. And it tells us very clearly in Matthew 29 and 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of who? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then it tells us in 20, in 20, it says, teaching them to observe all I, that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. In other words, when we do what the Lord has called us to do, he does not set us out on a journey. He comes with us on the journey so that what we accomplish is not based on what we're capable of doing, but what he's capable of doing through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he tells us that he'll be with us even into the end of age. So therefore, it's not about what we do down here. It's what we're going to do in heaven as well. Because just as he, he's with us here, he's going to be with us there. And so we need to understand, this is preparation for what the Lord has in store for us. We must do this. Every church must do this. And you can't make disciples. If you're not a disciple, you can't do whatever you want to do. Are y'all with me so far? Yes. That's every 
enter. So I want to make sure that I lay that foundation because anything that I say beyond this is not talking about the church. It's talking about the congregation, you and me, and you and you and you and the rest of y'all. You got me, right? Because what happens is he gives us congregations our game play so that it works with all the other congregations to make his plan work for the church. Now, our theme today is grace upon grace. My Lord. This I want you to turn to. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Man, I wish I had my favorite talk about this one. Because I will tell you that. I mean, literally, when we started out on this journey, we really know how we were going to get it. We still don't know how we're going to get there. Amen? Amen. But we know what we need to be doing today. I'm real clear on that. I can tell you what we need to do today. But, but here's just a story that takes me back to 2008 when I was sitting in a hotel room in Portland, Oregon, and I couldn't sleep. And it takes me back to this, this scripture because the beginning of this ministry was something that had worn on me for years. But I never thought I could. I looked at James Cooper and said, you can't do this. But you go out there and make a fool of yourself. And I'm telling you today, the Lord has called you to do some things. And you sit there saying, I'm not making a fool of myself. I'm not good at that. That's not what I want to do. And you're sitting right there listening to my voice right now. And I'm telling you that if... If the one thing that I have learned through the school of hard knocks, you can do much more than you ever thought you could do when you put your will in his hand. All right? Second Corinthians 12th chapter 4th verse. It says, because of the surprising greatness of the revelations for this season to keep me from exalting myself. There has given me a thorn in my flesh. Some of you may have an actual thorn of affliction. That's something that keeps your body from going as fast as you would like for it to go. Some of y'all might have got a little bit of awful showing up in your life. And, uh, some of you may, but, but, but some of us have this thorn in our flesh that tells us we're not good enough. There's other people who do it better. It seems like the anointing rests on some people where they can throw their head back and grab their ear. And <laughs> Real loud. Say stuff and folks fall out. You know? But it'll make you feel like there's something holding you back. Something's holding you back today. Something's holding you back from doing what the Lord has called you to do. Whether it's doubting yourself, doubting other people. Maybe it's been a disappointment. Maybe it's been something that somebody told you. Or maybe it's an actual affliction on your life. And I'm just here to tell you that uh, grace upon grace upon you. Then it says here, it says, a messenger of Satan to torment me. To keep me from exalting myself. Just to make sure I don't get full of myself as I'm talking about uh, James, 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 and you and you and you. And those who want to make sure we put the blame and the blessing on the right person, right? And then it says, it says, and, uh, and he has said to me, said, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I have I would rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. The very fact that you think you can is giving glory to God when we submit our weakness to Him for Him to do something great in your life. Then it says in 10, therefore, 
I am well content with my weakness. I know myself with insults, with distresses, with persecution, with difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, that's when I'm strong. Yes. When I'm weak, when that thing is on me so heavy and I think I can't do it, you are right for the Lord to do something amazing in your life. When you're too tired to go another step, the Lord is just preparing you for something great. When you can't see it any further beyond your situation, get ready for grace upon grace to step in and carry you to the place where the Lord would have you to be because he just wants to get you there so that he gets the glory. Grace upon grace and grace upon grace. And every time you think you can't, grace steps in and takes you a little bit further. And every time you say, that's not for me, grace steps in and takes you a little bit further. As soon as you look and see everybody's being blessed except you, just a little bit further. When you think you can't say it right, just a little bit further, grace steps in and takes you right there. I'm speaking it on your life because there's things that we think we can't do as a congregation and I'm speaking it right now. Grace upon grace is going to come on you because you're obedient and you're submitting to him and it's not about you and it's not about you, it's about God. Amen. Amen. Grace upon grace. Yes. Grace upon grace. So then, when I finally gave in and surrendered my life to Christ, my father-in-law came to visit us. And I, I, I had this thing in my heart that the Lord had said to do, but I just didn't talk to anybody for all of my life. I knew this back in my tw early 20s, and I never said anything. My, my, my closest of family is right here, here today, and I never said anything to them either. It was deep, too deep inside of me. I couldn't share. There's a piece of me that I wouldn't let anybody ever see. And I saw other people doing and doing and doing, and I'm like, wow, wow, but I just can't give it up. And my father-in-law came to visit after I finally decided I can't live this way anymore. And we were standing in the garage over in Victor, and I said, I said, Pastor Rogers, I said, uh, the Lord's called me to ministry. And he looked at me and he said, I knew that. <laughs> and then he said, well, what you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to love. He said, I might not be the best preacher. And I may not be the best at this. And I may not be the best at that. But I wonder why would the Lord even put this in my heart? I said, but I call it Rev. I said, but Rev, the one thing that the Lord has given me, <clears throat> and that's the ability to love. <laughs> and so if you go to the next slide, it's really important to keep up with because I'm going to go really, really fast. He said, I need you to love. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have ever lasting life. Many people don't understand what it means when he says everlasting life. It means that your heaven can be right here on earth. It means when it talks about life, it's not talking about the mere existence of a human being. It's the dwelling place of greatness, of goodness, of happiness, of joy, and peace, and love, and understanding all of the fruits of the Spirit. When he talks about life. He's not talking about our day-to-day -day life. He's talking about living a life in abundance. Are y'all with me so far? But it said to me, you can love. And as a result of that, then there was a vision that was given. And I don't know about you how you hear from the Lord, but I hear from the Lord uh, many times in actual sightings. I, I see it in my brain. I see the thing. I think see the thing. And then when I search the Lord, he tells me what that thing is. And he gave me this vision of a heart of God with a cross in the middle of it. And why is a cross in the middle of it? I've never seen that before. 
but it's because without his love, he would not have made the ultimate sacrifice for you. And that's where we got that logo or that image. Let me take it a little bit further. There are 75 million unchurched people in America. In 2003, there were 39 million. There has been a 92% increase in unchurched people in America. You understand that, 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 the, that the Christian religion is the only religion that is losing population in uh, the world. We're losing people. People are not coming to church. They feel that the church is irrelevant. The boomers and the bloomers and the builders are looking at the church and saying, listen, it's no longer relevant. All I need is to have my own personal relationship with God and I don't need a church. And we have the worst PR people in the world because it seems as though every time something goes wrong in the church, it's broadcast everywhere. So my question is, is it possible to have a church full of loving people who love Christ? Can it happen? Many of you have come here because you came from jacked up situations in your past. Many of you have come here, you came here, church broke and church hurt. Well, why'd you end up here? You ended up here because this is love, fellowship, worship center. You ought to see this vision coming to you. This is love, fellowship, worship center. Why do we get so many mean folk coming to this church? Because this is love, fellowship, worship center. Why do we get so many folk that's hard to love at this church? Because it's love, fellowship, worship center. Why would we be love, fellowship, worship center if we were never tested? Amen. Are y'all with me? So I'm telling you right now, you are here for one or two reasons. Either you're here because you're hard to love and you need somebody to love you, or you are here because you got a lot of love to give. Amen. Y'all with me, right? Yeah, look at the person on each side of me because one of y'all needs love. for the integration of the family, the church, and the community. We need to quit going to church. Stop being in church. You understand me, right? The model church. Can it be done? Well, if you want to find out whether something can be done, you try to find a model to pattern yourself after. That's why we don't fit into the, the, the any mold. That's why we don't fit like this and we don't fit like that. And when you all describe us to other people, y'all say, well, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it is different. And we're going to be different. And we, who going to tell? <laughs> The church should be more than just a place where you go and worship. It ought to be a part of your life. It, you know, we, we shouldn't say, wait, listen, and I want y'all to quit saying, when people ask you, what church do you go to, quit saying you go to Love Fellowship Worship Center. Tell them, we are Love Fellowship Worship Center. We are. We, it is, it is, it, it's a piece of us. When you tell people that you are Love Fellowship Worship Center, then they will perceive you an extension 
of this place that binds us together, that collects us together as one body. You know, I'll go to church. I am the church. And I am Love Fellowship Worship Center. I am Love Fellowship Worship Center. Yeah, look at somebody say, I am. of the community. Oh, wait a minute. All of our civil rights activity, all of that was centered around the church. And somehow when you needed, when you needed help, you went to the church. It seems like because when you go to the church, when you need help, not only do you get help, but you get this bonus. When you need help and you go to the social program, you get help. But when you go to the church with your problem, you get a bonus. You get your help, but you get a bonus called hope. The Lord is positioning us as a church. I get a, 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 a message asking me to be on the anti-poverty board for, for Monroe County. I'm like, why do you ask me? You know, because he's positioning us to have an impact on our community. And what we will be able to do is to determine how money spent. And I'm praying, and y'all need to pray with me, because I'm in this room with probably 35 business people, Wagmans and, and, and Harris and all the folk, all sitting in the room. And I'm the only preacher in there. And somehow I got to tell them we are not dealing with a social program. We have a spiritual program. Because we have because we have so many social programs to fix social problems, to fix social programs. We got social programs to monitor other social programs. We need a spirit to change in this place for us to get out of poverty. Because poverty is a spirit. And I know what I'm talking about. But listen, he's uniquely positioning us. Why? 27 years in corporate America. Y'all understand what I'm saying? 27 years in corporate America. And he puts me in this position talking to other people who are trying to get 27 years in corporate America. Yeah, y'all understand. But, but, but uh, the only difference is I'm a preacher and they're not. Y'all yeah, get me, right? So y'all pray real hard. Real, real, real hard. Real hard. People don't have, people don't just kill people and not feel any remorse. There's a spirit that causes you to do that. Don't worry so far, right? So here, so, so then you say, well, 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 how? What's the mission? You know, okay, what's the mission of your church? Well, our mission is threefold. First of all, we have to attract. Right? And then we've got to grow, and then we got to disciple. You didn't come here to be here. You came here to be the to get equipped so that you can go. You see, that's why I don't let you sit. Y'all have y'all run from me. <laughs> I'm telling you business, bro. That's what y'all do. Because it we're not here just to be here. The Lord created you with a purpose in mind. I told all of you, y'all here for a reason. The Lord put you on earth. You're not here just to suck up oxygen. No, the Lord has you here because he has a purpose and a plan for your life. And if you listen to your pastor, he will get you and push you and kick you and throw you until you do what he's called you to do. But y'all keep running from me. But the one thing that I have is grace upon grace. Yeah. And then I'm learning to run too. I can track and track you down for three miles. Three miles. Oh, God. You, you, you don't think you done got away. Some of y'all, 
halfway in and halfway out, you know you need to be here. You need to quit messing around. <laughs> yeah, fur. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Some of them in the back. I got all of you now. And I just put it on you. Listen, you not gonna, your food's not going to taste right until you step into the will of God. You're going to be trying to sleep that night and you're going to wake up hearing my voice. <laughs> so let me, let, I'm going to go up here for this part just to show you how, what has happened. Go, go, go. Keep going. Keep going. Listen. The mere fact that we're in this building is a miracle itself. No church that I've ever known has been able to purchase a building with a mortgage that didn't have five years of financials. No church that I know of has been able to do this and be here. You understand? Five years. You all have already gone to places that some churches have been around for 25 years and haven't made it there yet. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yes. Keep on going. Yeah. Well, how do we get here? How, you, because you got to attract, you got to grow, and you got to disciple, right? We did it by offering seminars like Hot and Bottle. Y'all remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. She came to me and said, I want to do a seminar uh, for women on menopause. I said, you have lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody coming to that. <laughs> Fill up the house. <laughs> a night of worship. Our Bible study, best I ever experienced. Amen. The best Bible study. <laughs> Y'all remember we did the return to the sanctuary with the Campbell brothers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 We've got a series, no limits. Yeah. <laughs> Prayer, just do it. And y'all remember this one, real church. And new seasons. Go to the next one. Then we did our college and careers and our tutoring on Friday nights. Amen. Then our outreach. I see Mike Peach back there. Uh, taught us how to do outreach, the right way to do outreach. We were tripping. He told us, how, taught us how to how to do outreach, and, and we got motorcycle groups coming. Our band goes out. We're feeding twelve to fifteen hundred people every summer. Yeah, this little church, and this was this was before y'all was filling up. Other churches were coming asking, "How do we do that? How did you do it?" Yeah, God, yeah, that's the answer. Absolutely, absolutely. Go to the next one. Then we did transforming pain into power. And uh, he said, he said, she said, but what does God say? And you'll remember, it was, it was 15 of us. And we did the Faith and Family Conference. And all of these were done with excellence. Amen. Every one of them was double excellent. No, we didn't have all the people and know how to make it happen, but we relied and depended on the Lord, and He provided for us grace to grace every step of the way. What are you doing? Then we did the 20 way, 21 days of fitness. And y'all remember, and this church has a has a unique ability to grab people before they blow up and get them here. And it seems like when they blow up, they still want to come. Jalen Bledsoe, man, you know, young millionaire, uh, uh, slave and gauge and, and all of that. They want to come. They call me and ask if they can come. Y'all feel me, right? Listen, and it because we so good. It's grace. You yes. don't understand what's resting. Listen, this is a unique moment in time. The Lord has blessed this congregation with extreme grace. And you got to appreciate it because if you don't appreciate something, it will depreciate. Y'all remember, jazz with a cause. 
jazz with the cause. But it has to be. But this is how you make the church, the community, and the family a unit. Because people will come not just for church. They'll come for us. Then listen, we do the, the, the strings for life. They come and they're like, oh, y'all having this program in the church? Yeah, in the church. Because when you all bad kids come and sit down, they seem to have a respect for being in the house of the Lord. And we can talk to them. Even if we're not talking about Christ, the mere fact that they're sitting in the front of the cross makes a difference. You know, we, we have our girls that, that, that dance. It's not about dance. You know, I mean, for some reason, y'all think, oh, they, they, they just come and dance. It's not about dance. It's about relationships. It's about learning to worship. And you can't choose that for your child. Your child does that. That is what you do as a parent. You don't make those decisions. Nobody makes those decisions because love fellowship is not where you go. Love fellowship is who you are. Nobody makes that to you. don't make time for yourself. You make time. You are in part of your time. It's the way you operate. It's the way you live. You don't make those decisions. You don't decide whether you come to Bible study or not. It is who you are. It's a part of your DNA. It's just what you do. It's in you. Understand what I'm telling you. Hey, y'all with me so far? Quit making decisions. It just ought to be who you are. The model church for the integration of the family, the community, and the church. It ought to all be one and the same. So, the journey forward. The journey forward. The journey forward. I'm almost there. Let me give you again the image. The image is that we need we need to be able to do all of that in a place. The reason that this place is set up when when when, when we built out this place, uh, we put a lot of stuff in here. People call us up because they want to come and record their videos and their music in this church because of the way it's set up. They can literally walk in, plug in, and do whatever it is they need to do. That's what we want to happen. I can just see it. Listen, right, Friday, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, rock, the Xerox Jazz Festival started. Listen, I want them calling us and saying, can we use your church? And you get these secular, secular, secular people coming into the church, having a jazz concert under the cross. And you don't know, think that they're going to look at that and say, there's certain words I'm not going to say in my song because I'm in the presence of God. I want that to happen. That's what the Lord has called us to do. That's the hook so that we can be that integration. On Friday night, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to love fellowship worship to the for? Well, I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That's what the church needs to be. Why can't the beauty shop be there? Why can't it be a plaza with the with the barber shop over there and with the with the restaurant over there and with this over there and with that over there? Why can't it all be right there in the church? Amen. So here it is. Here it is. Love Fellowship Worship Center Center being the cornerstone, the cornerstone with the Family Resource Center where people can go and get help in an environment where there's also hope. Yeah. No, we don't need to run the programs, but we need to have them housed where people got to walk past the cross to get some help. I got a vision of the, the doors being open to the church. And when the social program said, no, you walking past an open door. Y'all feel me, right? 
you know, then also having a place where people can come and just relax and, and, and do programs. I, I see it so plainly. Graduations happening at the church. Concerts happening at the church. All kinds of things happening at, the play, at, the, at this place. Y'all feel me, right? Yes. And this is not for you. I, I, I hate to disappoint you. It's not, it's not for you because the legacy that we will leave will last for generations. Amen. Generate this. It is our job to prepare it for somebody else to enjoy it. And so I just wanted to make sure you understood that that is the work that we have to do. That's the work that we have to do. Okay, go to the next one. But here's, here's what we need to happen. See, we got members of Love Fellowship Worship Center. But I need members who consider themselves partners in ministry. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, I can be a member. I, I got a membership at uh, Planet Fitness. <laughs> I ain't been to Planet Fitness in years. And I'm a car carrying member. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I need partners. I need partners. Uh, Drew and I were talking talking a couple weeks ago. I said, "Listen, man, we gotta we gotta preach together." You know, the worship team, we got to do it together. You know, we need the greeters. We are ministering together. Everything that we're doing, we need to do it together. Together. I don't need I have members, whatever. I need partners. You understand what I'm saying? The, the, the world doesn't need any long range, lone rangers. They need partners that can come in force and make things happen. Partners. <laughs> Y'all look at me like, uh, and then, well, he says something. No, I'm telling you, partners, I need you to get off your butt, come on and preach, and do something for the kingdom of God. Sitting there sucking up oxygen, and you need to get off your butt and get some work done for the kingdom. I'm here to serve you. You come to church, so you come to church with all your preconceived notions. I'm gonna give ten dollars. <laughs> don't let me don't let me sell t-shirts for eight dollars. Well, I'm gonna give me a t-shirt and I'm gonna give the other two. <laughs> partners! Partners! Y'all hear me right now? Partners! Partners in ministry! I'm telling you. This can leave a legacy. If we're going to turn this city, this country, and this world around, it's going to be because we have created and we're showing other churches how to create an environment where people don't do church, but they are the church. All right. So, there's a membership covenant. Now, uh, most of you have been through the new members orientation, right? And, and there's, a, there's a membership covenant that I shared with you. And I asked you at the end of sharing the covenant, covenant if you wanted to be, still wanted to be a member of this church. Those of you who heard me say that, raise your hand. But there's some couple things that we have to do if you want to be a member or a partner of this church. First of all, uh, and this is on your handout, but I wanted to make sure that each one of you had it. But it says, having received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I now wish to unite with Love Fellowship Worship Center. In doing so, I commit to the following, to the, and I commit myself to, to God in the, in, and to other members in the, to do the following. All right, and here's what it says. The first one is, I will protect the unity of Love Fellowship Worship Center. How do you protect the unity of Love Fellowship Worship Center? By acting in love toward other members. 
by refusing to gossip. If you got an issue with somebody, you go to that person with your issue. Don't call your friends. Don't send texts. If you got an issue with something that I said or something that I did, don't call your friends. Call me. I'm the one that said it. And by following and submitting to the Love Fellowship Worship Center leadership, and there are scriptures to support everything that I'm telling you. Amen? Then, it's, then the second thing, I will contribute to the expansion of Love Fellowship Worship Center by financially supporting Love Fellowship Worship Center's mission and by praying for its growth and by inviting the unchurched and the underchurched to participate in the life of this church and by warmly welcoming those who visit. Amen. Say, I'm willing to give up my seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. And by serving in the ministry of my church, by discovering and using my gifts and talents to serve the vision of Love Fellowship Worship Center, and by embracing God's five purposes for my life, connecting, growing, serving, and worshiping and sharing. Number four, to support the integrity of Love Fellowship Worship Center by attending regularly. Y'all do understand that we get about 65% of our members each Sunday. If y'all ever came all at the same time, we really have a problem. A good problem. By regularly attending and being faithful, by living a godly life, if Love Fellowship Worship Center is who you are, then you represent us everywhere and what you do. And then, and by, and by making a personal commitment to share the love of Christ within your circle of influence. Now, again, back to the beginning when I told you the story about sitting in a hotel room uh, July the 28th in, in 2008. The Lord gave me uh, a vision for the church. And I literally woke up and I just started typing. And I'm going to just read this very quickly. It says, Love Fellowship Worship Center is a model church for the integration of family, church, and community. Community is where we live, where we grow, where we learn, and where we share. Our community includes people of all ethnicities, ages, socioeconomic levels, political persuasion, religious affiliation, and lifestyles. The church is a place where families come together as one body of believers. The family includes mothers and future mothers, fathers and future fathers, and children. With a clear acceptance that, G that the Holy Bible is the only truth, and through His shed blood, of, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, salvation is available to everyone. We will seek to bridge the gap that separates us, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will reconcile all creation back to our Heavenly Father. With this in mind, we must seek our Heavenly Father for His wisdom and power to accomplish His goal, understanding that with God all things are possible to those who believe. Now, it requires that we have biblical teaching on various levels, on a new convert level, on a children's level, and a theological level. That's what we spend so much time focusing on teaching in this church. All right, And then our praise and worship, and I'm giving you some direction in each one of these areas. Our praise and worship needs to be done multi in a multicultural fashion. It needs to be participative, and it needs to be done with excellence. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our youth ministry for ages 3 to 5, I need to hear me, those who work with our young people. Our fundamentals of worship when they're three to five, we need to teach them those songs that will last them the rest of their lives. Yes. Biblical stories and Christian morals and memory verses for those who are ages six to 12. This is what you need to be doing. And Christian living and peer pressure, outreach and community for our 13 to 18 year olds. 
our mission, missions and community issues and marriage and family to those who are, who are uh, 19 to 25. This is what we need to be teaching. So as I'm talking to you all and placing you in place, I'm already giving you what you need to do. I don't need you to go and try to figure something out. I need you to do this. Y'all got me? Yes. And then adult ministry, evangelism, lifestyles, singleness, divorce, uh, uh, widows and widowers, age and social awareness, adult, uh, 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 um, elderly transition care, and then economic issues. We believe that on that day, when Christ comes again, he will hold all of us accountable for this ministry vision. We must answer to God for the work that we have done. We pray that God's hand be with us as we strive to please Him in all that we do. Praise God. Hallelujah. The back of two and two says, write the vision and make it plain so that they who read it may run with it. And today, we're going to run with this man, with this man and woman of God, so that we can go forth and do what God has purposed and planned for us to do as a ministry here at Love Fellowship Worship Center. As a sign of solidarity and support, because the vision has been laid out before us on today, and if you have questions, you can always go to pastor and ask him. But today, we need each and every one of you, as, par as pastor has said, partners, partners, not just members, but partners, to come alongside and let's do the work. Let's get it done in Jesus' name so that on that day we can hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Isn't that what we all want to hear? Amen. 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 How many are with us on today? Come on, everybody. Yes. Even those who are not members of you are here as a witness on today. We want you to sign on as well and support us through prayer and whatever else you may be able to do to help the ministry to go forth. So we're going to turn you into the hands of our greeters. They're going to um, guide you as to how we're going to come up. And we're going to ask every member to sign off. And first, Pastor, we want you and Terry to come up and sign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as Pastor and Terry are signing, as you all know, this is our fifth year. And I'm not sure if many of you know, but the, when you celebrate an anniversary, the wood, wood is the symbol for the fifth year. And wood represents fortitude, solidarity, and strength. And this is all symbolic of us saying that we're going to stand in solidarity. We're going to stand in support of making this happen in Jesus' name. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to read the, um, the, the, time, the time chest. It says, Love Fellowship Worship Center, James R. Cooper, Sr., lead servant and pastor. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and 18, here on June 26, 2016. I am a time capsule. I hold treasures from Love Fellowship Worship Center that reflect on God's favor, faithfulness, miracles, blessings, and goodness. In five years from now, we will open this treasure, and we will, it will reveal the treasures that we've placed in there. So that five years from now, yeah. when we look back on this time that we have marked, we will see the progress that has been made. We will see the steps that have been taken as we move forward. And we will celebrate even greater because the best is yet to come. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Then when we're done with this, we're going to turn it over to the Down Family Saints. Hallelujah.
both sides. Both sides.
we are ready. We are ready. Are you ready for some good singing? Are you all ready to worship? Let's go ahead and get on Are you all ready to worship? I'm so very, very grateful. 